having obtained the required two-third majority and the largest number of votes, Algeria, Guyana, and the Republic of Korea are elected members of the Security Council for the two-year term beginning of January 1st, 2024. Guyana took a seat at the UN Security Council as an elected non-permanent member at the beginning of 2024. The second meeting of the Security Council is and called And it holds the presidency of the UNSC for the month of February. I had a chance to speak with a South American country's representative, Ambassador Rodriguez Burkett at Guyana's mission in New York. What is your country's view on peace and security issues? That's a, a big topic as well as the Security Council with a lot of escalations in the Middle East into a potentially wider conflict. Um, and, and are you optimistic that we could see some progress on a ceasefire in Gaza? We must be optimistic because when we lose hope, then we lose everything. And we believe that the time for a ceasefire was a long time ago. And so the sooner, the better. Uh, we will work with our colleagues on the council uh, to see how that will progress. There is a, a draft resolution being discussed, but we also know that there are other efforts being uh, taking place. And we hope those efforts would also yield results. Uh, these are efforts outside of the Security Council. But let me also say that Guyana has always supported the two-state solution. We believe that Israel and Palestine can live side by side in peace and harmony, if not harmony, tolerance. And I say that because uh, Guyana is a country of six different peoples. Many of our peoples, their descendants were brought there as slaves, as indentured servants. And we have managed to build a country that has religious harmony, not tolerance, harmony, where we celebrate our diversity, whether it's in religion, whether it's in ethnicity. And we believe that this is possible all over the world, but we have to invest in diversity. If you don't invest in diversity, then you will not reap the rewards and it can be used for divisions. When we look at what is happening in many parts of the world, we also see though that there's a big aspect that is related to development. And if we do not invest in development in many of these countries, we will continue to see conflicts increase. So there are many aspects to this, but we believe that peace is always possible. And do you feel strongly that that kind of perspective as a smaller nation can really make a difference at the UN Security Council with that conflict and many other issues that you'll be discussing? Yes, I think that the council, the 15 members of the council can bring diverse views and views from small states like mine, I think are also important. We're a low-lying state, the capital city, it's almost two meters below sea level. So we know what it is when it comes to climate change. We know what it is when it comes to living together um, as a people. We know what, it, what, what possible conflicts are as well. And so we think that coming to the council as a small state, bringing the voice of a small state, it's important as we discuss the peace and security in the wider world. A lot is being made about a border dispute between Guyana and Venezuela, but you're not planning to bring that to the Security Council. Why is that? Well, we put up our bid for the Security Council about 12 years ago, and Venezuela was one of the countries to support us very early in that bid. We did not at that time at all, and many, and many years after that, thought about the issue of Venezuela as being a priority for us when we get on the council. We had to bring this matter to the attention of the council in December because of what was coming out of Venezuela. And we wanted to make sure that the council was aware that there are threats to our sovereignty and territorial integrity. We wanted them to be aware as they, if I can use this term, are the custodians of the maintenance of international peace and security but it is not our intention to have this matter highlighted during our term on the council, but we always reserve our right should circumstances change. 
some of those circumstances uh, to some countries are changing. There uh, has been a call by Brazil to move its military to the border. The Biden administration sent some officials down to Guyana as well. Um, are there concerns, the outside concerns, warranted? At that time, we felt so. Uh, but since then, things have developed. There is an agreement now between Guyana and Venezuela, basically in terms of de-escalation, but for us to also discuss issues. We're neighbors. We will always be neighbors. And we want to make sure that neighborly relations uh, continue. And already our ministers have been meeting, and we hope that that sort of um, discussion will continue. At the same time, as you know, the matter is before the International Court of Justice, and that's where we believe it should be. So the matters that we are discussing with Venezuela relate to uh, consequential issues, I would say, as two neighbors. Your country has the fastest growing economy in the world. No doubt you've seen the change. Um, what have you learned from other countries to grow in a more sustainable way? Well, I guess we have seen that rapid uh, injection of, of resources can sometimes be a curse in, in some places, but it can also be a blessing. And for us in Guyana, for many years, uh, the government that I'm from, we knew what we wanted as a country. We knew the kind of infrastructure we wanted. We knew that the education and health uh, facilities and services, we, we know what we wanted. What was missing was adequate resources. We did what we can with what we had had back then, but now we have an, uh, some more resources that we can adequately address these issues. And this is why we've been focusing on basically building our infrastructure, educating our people, putting in place really good health care um, and other uh, social services as well. So the country is in a period of rapid transformation. We believe that as we get out on the other side, it would be a brighter and better Guyana. We also have to ask you about Guyana's significant natural resources that also play a part of that as well. Um, a lot of people are talking about it, have been talking about it. Um, how do you plan for that and to make sure that your people are the ones who benefit the most? I would say that for many years, we have treated our natural resource uh, base in a very prudent manner. We have a country with more than 80% of it covered with forests. And it is not, I would say by accident, that it remains standing. It, it's because of policies that we've put in place over the years, and this has been beneficial to us. And we have said that even as we grow, we will continue with those policies, preserving our forests, uh, for future generations to come. But it's also not just a benefit to Guyana. It contributes to the lungs of the world. And we're very proud of that. And we're very proud of what we've accomplished in the work that we've done with our forests. So 2030, just a few years away, how do you feel about your country's progress in reaching the sustainable development goals? I feel good about it. We just had what is called here in the United Nations a voluntary national review of the progress we've made with certain SDGs. And that allowed us as well domestically to reflect on all the programs that we've had and have and how they've been doing. And so when you look at housing, when you look at water, when you look at education, health, we've made significant progress, but we still have more to do and we are going to exert all our efforts to ensure that we achieve the, the 2030 agenda. But let me add to say that the 2030 agenda is a global agenda, and we recognize that many countries face tremendous difficulties at this point in time. And so we will continue to advocate for the reform of the financial architecture. It's still very difficult uh, for 
developing countries to access finance at a reasonable cost. Uh, they still face many, many challenges with the impacts of climate change. When we take our Caribbean, for example, one hurricane can wipe out your entire GDP. So Ghana will continue to advocate for those uh, global reforms. Ambassador, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you.